Hey guys, I just got back here to the shop after what was a bit of an unorthodox house call today. Now, I was able to film in there, but I do have a few still photos from before I picked the place, so you get an idea of what I was up to over there. Now, what makes today's pick a little bit different is that everything in there was absolutely free. Now, that rarely happens, but I was contacted by a family friend who relocates seniors and sometimes clears out of states as well. Now, typically, she'd just pack everything up and send it out for donation, but she decided to reach out to me and see if there's anything in there I'd be interested in and finding it a new home. So before I went there, she sent me a couple pictures of China Cab and it's full of glass and knickknacks. Now I normally don't buy that stuff because it doesn't sell that well anymore and it just seems to sit on my shelf forever. But hey, free is free and this could be the start of a new business relationship. So I decided to make the trip and take my chances and I think I made out alright. Let's see what we... Okay, so I cleared a space here by the front window and this is my haul for today. Uh, it looks like quite a bit. It didn't seem like that much when I actually left the place. It was more like a handful of totes and a few loose items. Uh, but there's actually a lot here. So I'm going to start with these bags on the floor. Now, there was a walk-in closet full of these bags uh, stacked everywhere, ready for donation. And um, as I was wrapping up the day, uh, I stuck my head in there and looked at the bags quickly. And noticed a few vintage pieces kind of poking through. And I pulled a few out right away. Mm -hmm like this uh, cool plastic hat here. It looked new at first, but then I took a look at the label here, and uh, you know, it's a vintage one for sure. So, pretty cool party hat. Uh, there's a couple uh, needlepoint purses in here, funky leather bag, you know, like an evening little clutch or something here, uh, a fur hat, and uh, here's a fun little leather purse there. Now that's just um, digging through one bag, um, just kind of peering through the sides of it here. Uh, even if I, stick my hand in this one here you've got this uh and the name's kind of eluding me right now but uh this style of uh dress or robe here you want to recall that but that's going to be vintage as well and then uh right on top of the bag here is this uh funky little summery looking uh bag here too so really cool summer purse or bag or for the beach or something like that um, they still make them new, but these are really popular in the 70s. So just looking at the outside of the bags, I can see some vintage stuff hiding in there, or at least vintage style anyway. Looks like there's some leather gloves. You know, there's a bunch of bags in this one by the looks of it. Um, what do we got here? So this one here isn't exactly old. Uh, it's just a very 70s style by the looks of it. Just, uh... One of the little hanging organizers. It folds right up. Um, this one's lots of bags in here. So, you know, maybe there'll be a designer one in there. Maybe there'll be something vintage. Who knows? I mean, once I've gone through all this stuff and taken what I've wanted that I think I could sell, I'm just going to donate it anyway. So I'm going to get these out of the way so we can take a better look at everything else I picked up today. But just, again, looking through the bag, like there's some sort of wallet... Looks like there's a box there. I don't know if they check this stuff for money or jewels. You never know. So I'm going to go through all this stuff. And uh, if I can't use, I'll just drop off at the donation center. Okay, so I've got the clothes out of the way here. So we'll just kind of go left to right and take a look at what I grabbed. Um, there was some furniture in there. If you saw the photos, there was a, you know, a nice china cabinet, a buffet. Um, there's some other furniture in there. Uh, it was good quality stuff. It wasn't old. But really not worth my while to uh, drag that down, load it into my trailer, and try and sell it. Um, I really like to stick to the vintage in my shop. But this chair here caught my eye. Um, it's actually a rocker, and it's super comfortable. See, it's rocking there. All right. So it's super comfortable, really cool green, uh, probably 1950s. Um, really nice looking fabric on it, and it's got the matching ottoman. Uh, pretty good shape for its age. Uh, I noticed um, a little repair there on the skirt, but that's no big deal. Um, someone could mend that properly and you wouldn't even notice it. But it was free, and I know from experience that uh, most thrift stores uh, won't accept this sort of thing. It'll just go right in the dumpster. So uh, I'm considering that one a rescue, and someone's really going to like that. And right next to it is a little more traditional chair. It's a, it's a rocking chair as well with really low arms. It would make a good nursing chair. Again, it's got really nice fabric on it, and it's got some nice carving up here. This could be 1920s or earlier. Uh, it's definitely uh, more of a Victorian style chair, but uh, you know it's pretty clean overall. Hard to leave that one behind. Hardly took up any space at all. So we've got this window here full of stuff, as you can see as I pan across here. Now, this is not stuff I normally buy for the most part. 
Um, there's a lot of silver plated items here and glass and china. Uh, as we go along, you'll see there are some better pieces in there that maybe I would have grabbed one here, one there. But for the most part, this stuff is a really slow sell. I don't really like having it in the shop. It's not worth a whole lot. It sits around forever. So these items here, for the most part, will be blown out through my online auction and I'll kind of take what I can get for it. So right up here, you know, we've got uh, what might be a modern but a cool little basket. And we've got some silver plated pieces here. We've got like a big handled urn, some sort of serving piece, uh, a pitcher, some vases, miscellaneous items and small stuff here, serving ware. We've got a couple candelabras. So these are just plated silver. Uh, these are not sterling. I've checked these ones all right here quickly. This one for here example says EP on copper. That means electroplated on copper. So that's just an electroplated silver over top of copper. Not much value at all. Not something that's collectible right now. So I tend to sell this stuff in lots. But I did get lucky on a few pieces though as we get in here closer. Uh, there is some sterling silver here. There's a little decorator bowl here. We've got some open salts it looks like. Um, too small for a napkin holder. I'm not sure exactly what that would hold. But these all have uh, real sterling marks on. This one's got a European one. You can see, um, if you look up close there, you can see the lion. If you can see all four legs on it, that's a European hallmark on there. Same goes for these little spoons here. Um, this is like a baby rattle. This is all sterling as well with uh, mother of pearl. So that's a cool little piece there. That was a fun little find. Uh, we've also got some nice uh, sterling silver candlesticks here. They've got weighted bases or cement in there or something similar. But uh, again, they've got some value for sure. And this one's clearly marked sterling on the bottom. So if you're looking for sterling silver versus plate, look for the word sterling. You'll see 925. You'll see 800 sometimes. Uh, and the European hallmark, like I said, the most common one you're going to see is uh, the uh, lion with four legs. We've also got a couple sterling uh, napkin rings here. And this is probably the best piece here. This is a, like a large cigarette case. It is monogrammed with somebody's name on it. So this one's got the Sterling Hallmark right inside there. Uh, it's pretty easy to see. So it, it's very heavy. Uh, it's almost 250 grams. I put it on the scale. Um, so Meltdown Scrap Weight, that's going to be over $150. So up here we've got a few other odds and ends. We've got a fan. It doesn't look too old. It was just kind of shiny, so I grabbed it. We've got a couple uh, vanity mirrors here. Nothing too exciting. We've got this little uh, blown glass uh, dish here. I think that may be from Fenton. Um, looking at this closer here, I just noticed a big chip on it, and it's not old. That's like a cranberry glass vase that's going to be uh, probably just donated. I grabbed this little green guy here, opening his uranium glass, um, which will glow under a black light. Uh, it's become really collectible uh, to even the younger generation because a case full of this stuff uh, under black light is uh, pretty cool to see. I'll post uh, a picture up here of something under a black light so you can see how it really glows uh, under that light. We've got a few little tchotchkes and knickknacks here. Uh, might be a little bit of value, a little mini urn. Uh, we've got these uh, couple nice uh, porcelain pieces here. These are made by a company called Kaiser in Germany. Uh, some of them are pretty popular with uh, the mid-century modern collectors out there. Um, this is probably from the 60s, 70s. They seem to be pretty decent sellers. Um, probably $30 to $40 per piece. This is some sort of trinket dish with what looks like some keys in there. And next to that, uh, we've got a few nicer pieces here. Now, 25, 30 years ago, this stuff was red hot and it would sell for quite a bit of money. Uh, this is some Moorcroft pottery here from England. Uh, really big among collectors. Uh, it's still in business today. They've been around forever, it seems like. So we've got a pair of uh, candle holders here. We've got uh, some sort of little chalice or vase or something. Uh, they're both in good shape. Now, the candle holders are probably only worth about $50, $60 retail. Um, you know, if that's something you specialize in, you could probably ask closer to 100 but you could sit on it for quite a while. I tend to move these fast. They're going in online auction. Again, they sit in my showcase for months and months and no one wants them. Just not my customer base. We've got uh, some sort of uh, China urn here as well. I haven't looked that one up. Yeah, lots of miscellaneous items here. A paperweight. We've got a piece of studio pottery. Uh, decorative uh, brass enamel piece here. 
cigarette tin. Uh, we've got a couple pieces of ivory. Uh, these are fun. These will go on my display cases for sure. Um, so these are Bakelite. These are probably 1920s, 1930s. They're little napkin rings. Um, uh, really nice little colors on them. Uh, they're obviously some sort of like little dodo bird or something like that. Uh, I had one of these recently. Um, I typically sell these for about $25, $30 each. Um, they're really collectible with the Bakelite collectors and the Art Deco crowd as well. Okay, so we've got some odds and ends here. I'm really not quite sure what these medallions are for here. I just thought I'd grab them for fun. Uh, we've got a mid-century modern little candy dish here. That's about a $20 item. Um, we've got some uh, enameled brass little bells here. Uh, vases, more bells. We've also got some brass bells. And you're going to see this is part of a larger collection once I get to it. Uh, there is a couple Royal Daltons here, though. Now... I can appreciate them for what they are, and uh, they were very collectible for a very long time. Uh, but those days are long gone now. Um, you might see this piece uh, online, like taking a quick look somewhere, someone asking, you know, $150, $200 or more on it. But once you actually get into the sold listings, this is only something I can sell for about $50, $60 at full retail. I'm going to put it in my online auction, and whatever it sells for, it sells for. And we've got another one over here. This is the Town Crier, also a Royal Dalton. They're both in really good shape with no chips, which is nice. But again, you know, fifty to hundred dollars retail on this max used to be two, three hundred dollars. And over here, we've got uh, a nice little pewter piece here. We've got a crystal decanter. Uh, we've got some alabaster bookends and little figurines. A couple of these things here will go in the shop on a shelf, like the bookends. Um, maybe this piece here so far. But so far, not much of this is going to be on my shelf. This is going to go straight to auction. So this is when we get more into the bells. There's a big bell collection uh, from this woman. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about these, but I did recognize a few names and uh, patterns and things like that right away. If we go to the front here, we've got a couple pieces of little china here. Nothing too exciting. Uh, we've got uh, two uh, angels here, or cherubs. Um, they've got some sort of mark inside. I'm not sure. They kind of look like a hummel. Uh, little guy here, which is uh, made by Coalport, which if you're into China, uh, you'll know is a pretty decent name. But across the board, this sort of stuff here, the value is really nosedived in the last uh, 15 years or so. We've got a couple better ones here at the front. Um, they're uh, Joseph Originals. I can't remember where they're from exactly, but they seem to be a little bit more collectible at about 20 to $35 each. I'll probably put all three of these in a lot on a place like eBay and sell them. Uh, again, I don't want uh, this type of stuff in my store. It's not going to sell. These are really nice here. I'm not sure where these ones are from, but they're really well done. You can see um, the overlaid glass, the way it's been ground down. They're very thick and heavy, so I've got to do some research on these ones still. We've got these uh, gold gilt ones here as well. I don't see any marks that are obvious on them, but uh, I'm going to take a closer look at those ones as well. Uh, if I had to guess, somewhere in the ballpark of $20 to $30 each. Uh, over here, we've got some by Fenton glass. This is a ruffled edge one here. This one's actually pretty nice. It's like a milk glass um, with a clear kind of uh, ruffled edge there. Really nice shape. All these are in really great shape with no chips on them. And these are going to be Fenton glass as well. This is called the hobnail pattern. Nothing too special about them, but uh, there was a lot of collectors for this stuff in uh, the 1970s, 1980s, even the early 90s as well. Uh, we've got a couple more of the same pattern than back here. And then we've got a couple here that are made by Balik, which, uh, again, was a big name in China. Uh, it's died off quite a bit, but they're going to have some value, $15, $20. Um, again, if this is something you specialize in and you want to have this sort of stuff in your shop or sell it online, you can double or triple those prices, but you may have to sit on it for quite a while before they actually go. And I'm all about moving inventory, especially this sort of stuff that I don't really specialize in. So before we move on here, you're probably wondering, how does this guy who doesn't really seem to care about China and collectibles and those sorts of things know so much about it? Well, I've got my mom to thank for that. When we were little kids, 35, 40 years ago, we were dragged across Ontario to flea markets and antique shows. And this is what was hot then. Hey, we've got a nice hand-blown one over here. I don't know who made that. And we've got front. We've got a couple here that are actually made by Wedgwood, which is... Um, Normally known for, uh, you know, their bowls or plates or vases, things like that. Um, and that kind of, uh, you know, country blue, like whatever it's called. But these are Wedgwood Bells with a cameo on them here. 
It's got some sort of little uh, figure on there as well. So they'll be collectible to someone who likes, you know, good glass or bells or a Wedgwood collector. And then there's another one over here as well. And up front, we've got a couple of Italian ones right here. This is a uh, Capo di Monte. Uh, Italy right there. It is clearly marked on there as well. Not sure if that's got much value or not. And here's a nice Italian one here. This might be one of the better ones here as well. Also Murano glass. Nice and clean piece right here. So we also got this uh, random little parrot here that hangs on a brass hanger here. I just thought it was kind of cute and someone would like that. It's, it's pretty decent quality. Um, also picked up this vintage style radio that's got a CD player in it. Um, I think it's got like a set deck on the side as well. It's got a record player uh, under this here. So if, if that's working, um, that's worth at least $50 to $75. Just to sell as a used item. Not going to go in my shop. I don't like mixing vintage with newer stuff, but I know they're popular. We've got a few odds and ends on top of it here. We've got a Burke's box, which is like the Canadian Tiffany with just some knives in there. They're very simple, nothing valuable on these. I was hoping they were going to be sterling. But this piece right here is kind of interesting. This is a large bowl made by Wedgwood again. Uh, it's marked on the bottom there. It's about eight inches. Uh, this is a darker blue than you normally see. It's a little more collectible. It's got a silver plated ring on it. So this is more of a centerpiece bowl. It looks like the previous owner maybe had some artificial flowers or something in there, but it's in really good shape. This could be one of the best pieces in the whole collection here. I did see a couple sold at about two to $300 each. Now, I don't know how long they were for sale for. Um, I don't want to sit on this thing for six months, uh, so I'm going to post it probably about $250 or best offer. And if someone gives me $150, they can have it. And just a couple more things here. These are uh, Royal Dalton plates. We've got the, uh, the uh, Parson and the Squire. Um, they're marked on the backside there. Again, 40 plus years ago, these things were probably worth, you know, $40, $50 each or more. Today, $15 bucks if you're lucky. Uh, oh, here's a broken little piggy bank. Uh, she's like, don't just take this. It's full of pennies. So I was like, okay, cool. And we've got a couple things on the floor here. Uh, actually, we've got a collectible bells book here. So this may help me identifying some of the ones I can't figure out yet. Just some random stuff just for fun. Uh, nothing really overly collectible here. Just more interesting subject matter in general. Coffee table book. Uh, there was some records in there really wasn't what I was looking for, but I grabbed a few that were a little more interesting to me um, I like the sound effects one. I'll listen to it and uh, Then put it up for sale. They're usually only worth a couple bucks each But some go upwards of 20 30 if they're rare enough. This one here is environmental sounds. We've got sound effects, you know Jet takeoff woman screaming. So that'd be kind of fun to listen to uh, I haven't seen this one before uh, again because it's Peter Pan. I grabbed it. It's got you know a nice photograph on it there I've uh, got the hair soundtrack. Uh, Burl Ives, just because it's Burl Ives, this is a guy that um, uh, sang all the songs in uh, the original Rudolph uh, claymation from the 60s. And just a funny looking cover on this one for fun. Again, all this stuff was ready for donations, so I decided to grab a few for fun. And uh, if they're not something I can really sell, I'll donate them myself. So just finishing up here, we've got this really nice uh, jewelry cabinet here, uh, made by Bombay, who's uh, no longer in business, but their stuff is pretty decent quality. It was quite pricey when it was new. So this one here has got one, two, three, four, five drawers on it. Nice clean piece, organizers for your jewelry. Uh, the sides uh, pull out like this and you can hang necklaces and things in there. The top opens up, there's more room for jewelry in there. Now I think the family probably took a whole lot of jewelry because if you look on top here, this is all that I got, and most of it's just cheaper costumes. Some of it's actually like pretty much new. Um, there might be a few better pieces in there. I haven't seen anything really jumping out at me yet. Some Christmas stuff here. We've got a little dish with some more costume. A couple coins and pins and things. I will go through all this stuff thoroughly piece by piece. Uh, I'm looking more for the obvious stuff. I didn't see any like rings or obvious gold or anything substantial yet. Good, like, nice little inlaid box here. That's empty. And a box here. I think there's a couple better pieces in here. There's a little watch. Um, not familiar with that name. I'm going to have to look that one up. More costume. Uh, this piece here is a sterling silver necklace. So that's a, a nice sign. Uh, more costume. More little pins. Again, I'll look at this stuff closer. This is a fun little uh, coin pouch. It's almost like a puzzle. It just kind of like pulls open like that. Another watch here. I'll take a closer look at 
and some brooches and things like that in there as well. So it was worth grabbing. I can always sell this stuff. I'll probably lot most of it up uh, and sell it through my online auction. And uh, there's a ring box here as well. But it's not actually a ring. It's a little pin from Expo 86. And I, I actually did just take a quick look at this one on the back side, and it is a 10 karat gold. Now, it's very small, so it's probably only worth about, you know, $10, $15 or so. If I want to, you know, sell it in the shop, it's probably $25, $30. But it's a little dated already, so you've really got to love Expo to want this little pin. So all this stuff worth grabbing because it was going to be donated. And when you donate something, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make it on the shelf. A lot of stuff gets pitched because they got a lot of stuff coming in every single day. And this cabinet here is a, a decent piece. So I think I'm just going to sell that in my online auction as well. Again, it's not old, so I don't want it in the shop. And the last two pieces down here are a couple little crocs that were on the counter here. The first one here is a two gallon Imperial from Medelta Potteries in Medicine Hat, Alberta. If you're Canadian, you're very familiar with this one here. Uh, pretty collectible name uh, and it's got the original lid now i don't think this green band is original here there may be blue underneath it or there may be nothing i know this woman was a painter so she may have done that herself but fortunately that can be removed easily enough without damaging the croc and the last one here is going to be the best one this is uh uh ackers um this is actually finley acker company uh, I've never had one of these before, so I had to look this one up. It's got a handle on it, and it's got the lid. It's in really good shape. Uh, this one here, I'm going to price at about $125. So if we take one more look at what I picked up today, between a couple small pieces of furniture, all these smalls here, the glasses, silver plate, the china, the bells, that sort of thing, a little bit of jewelry, the chest, and a couple good crocs. And we've got the bags of clothing to go through as well. I think there's probably about $1,500 worth of stuff in here, uh, which is a pretty nice haul considering I'd have to pay anything for it. So just because I say there's about $1,500 worth of inventory here doesn't mean it's all going to sell tomorrow and we're going to get that for it. Like I said, I'm going to blow most of this stuff out through online auction and it'll probably sell at more of a wholesale price. So maybe I'll end up with half of that. Really hard to say at this point. So after unpacking all the china, collectibles, and breakables, it looks like today's haul is going to be pretty promising, even if it's not what I normally pick up. But like I said before, free is free and I'll take it. Now, after totaling it all up, I think it's only fair that I pay something for everything I picked up here today. It's not so much about what I picked up, but the fact that she was kind enough to call me in and show the generosity that she did. Also, I'd really love to continue working with her in the future, and when that big estate full of stuff I'm really looking for shows up, I can pay her a very fair price and take a whole lot more. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you like hardcore picking, you may want to check out one of these videos up here. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay in the loop for new content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.